In a year as unusual as 2020 has been, it's, you know, it's easy to get caught up in this delusional thinking. And you're talking about like as a traumatic response, like a trauma response, like, and, but, you know, we want to look at how we can put ourselves in a better place to avoid this type of thinking. So uh, let, let's talk about this. I, I know you, uh, I'm going to just let you have front and center here and take it away. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, yes, I think a lot of this delusional thinking is a trauma response that, you know, we're in a year where we're not able to connect with other people the way we have been before. So we're seeking out connections in odd places on the internet. Um, and also we're seeking ways to connect uh, things that we're seeing um, just to feel like we have some sense of truth. And sometimes the connections we're making are not ones that really make a whole lot of sense. Um, there was a really great article on Medium recently called um, A Game Designer's Analysis of QAnon that beautifully illustrates this phenomenon known as apophenia. Now, apophenia is the human tendency to perceive meaningful connections between completely unrelated things. The article describes a game that the author designed in which the incidence of wood chips on the floor in the shape of an arrow pointing towards a wall must surely be a cute clue in the game, right? Except it wasn't, it wasn't at all. It turns out those were just wood chips on the floor. Um, while apophenia is this plague for a game designer, it, you know, it leads players off track and you know, helps them to avoid the actual clues of playing the game um, and game designers wanna avoid that. QAnon, on the other hand, is in playing exactly this game, wants you to be led astray by weird connections and, uh, you know, almost uh, feeds your skepticism so that you'll make even weirder and weirder connections between things. So how do we gird ourselves against this kind of nefarious use of what's really a, a natural phenomenon of the human mind, this desire to find meaning and connections between things around us? which sometimes goes wrong. Um, I think one way to combat this is to really develop our discernment. And I've talked about discernment many times on this show. As artists and particularly musicians, we're actually somewhat practiced in this. Um, we have cultivated our ears to recognize when we've sung a sour note, or conversely, we know when our rhythm is right in the pocket. Um, for those of us creating as recording artists and producers and DJs, we've hopefully developed a strong concept of what's cool versus what's cheesy. And yes, I mean, there are many entities out there who could be doing a lot more of that discernment. But in any case, we know, you know, a thing or two about discerning when something works and when it doesn't. And we can call those things out pretty freely. Conversely, having like a, tro a trophies for everyone mentality, which has been disturbingly popular in recent years, I think, it doesn't actually help us in being creatures of true discernment, because that's pretty much the opposite of differentiating between what works and what doesn't. It's a mentality that you know, puts the word of some quack on the internet who's deathly afraid of vaccines in the same arena as actual scientists who've made a study of microorganisms, their life's work. It's a mentality that allows the ravings of a subversive blood, blood libel cult to obstruct the work of organizations that have been fighting the fight against child trafficking for decades. So chances are the people that studied and practiced in the field do know more about it. Um, and if it sounds like I'm only picking on QAnon or flat earthers, know that there are plenty of popular delusions on the left to be wary of as well. In 2020, the minefield is vast. So in order to combat some of these um, very delusions, you not only need discernment in general, but you need the discernment to know about yourself, to know when you're a muggle or when you're an expert on the topic. Now, so much of delusion um, that we're seeing comes from this kind of hubris that says my intuitions on this subject and my skill and understanding is greater than the knowledge that's out there, which, you know, what I say to that is how good is your intuition really? Have you been keeping a record of it? Because if you're on a spiritual path, and you know, I talk about that a lot on here, you seriously should be keeping a record of your intuition, of its successes and failures. And 
in general, have you been skeptical of your own skepticism and thought about why you have that skepticism in that arena um, at all? The why is important as well. So this week, and you know, I just want to, you know, see this week and the weeks to come. I'd like to encourage my creatives and spiritual folks out there to lean into sharpening your discernment, honing your picker by making conscious choices, even about simple things like what to include on a Spotify playlist. Yeah, even as mundane as that. And then ask yourself why you see it that way and why you've made the choices you've made. Consciously exercising your sense of taste is part of an overall faculty for discernment, especially the process of considering why you make one connection and not another. When we're making these you know, solid and conscious connections with our own discernment, we're less susceptible to seeking connection through the wood chips on the floor. When we lean into a direction that, you know, it's just popular, or maybe we lean into a direction because it's unpopular and it makes us feel rebellious. Both of those things are falsehoods. So this week, maybe we try exploring our own truth, our own middle path through all of that mayhem. And that's what I got. <laughs>